I want to now bring in Dennis Root. He is a law enforcement trainer, and he also investigated how police handled the George Zimmerman case. He was also in that courtroom and testified in that trial. Mr. Root, thanks so much for being with us today. I want to just expand a little bit on protocol and procedure with regard to what an officer can do and is trained to do in a circumstance that played out uh, in the in the killing of, of Michael Brown and I, I hope you can take me from at least where the witnesses have placed uh, the the shooter the police officer himself and the deceased uh, Michael Brown and that is approximately 20 to 30 feet apart after a supposed struggle can you take me from there and tell me what officers learn Sure. I think one of the most important things that we have to consider right off the bat is the variations that we have in the information. But based on what's been revealed so far, we have some kind of altercation that takes place within the vehicle. And depending on which version, you see an evolution begin where it's possible that there was a struggle over a firearm and at least one round or one bullet was fired. From there, it exits the, the car. They come out of the patrol car and begin to travel down the roadway. At some point, whether he was firing toward him while he was turned away or after Mr. Brown turned back toward him, the officer felt compelled to discharge his firearm again. What we have to understand is you have to look at officer subject factors, height, weight, physical abilities known to the officer, known about each the officer and uh, Mr. Brown. Then you have to look at the fact that Mr. Brown could have been charging the officer. And if it, that in fact was the case, and he already knew that he was willing to go for his firearm, he would be justified in using deadly force or shooting Mr. Brown. So that's the if, and I, I got to ask you, on the other side of the coin, because clearly officers are trained to exercise as much restraint as possible, what are they trained not to do? What are they trained to look for so as not to discharge a weapon when there is perhaps 20 or 30 feet between a subject and an officer? Well, that's a very gray area, and the reason I say that is most people immediately would say, well, they're looking for a, a weapon or a firearm, a knife, a gun, something like that to pose a, a threat to the officer. But the truth is, officer subject factors alone are enough to justify the use of deadly force or the discharge of your handgun. And the other thing that you really have to consider is when somebody is looking down the business end of a handgun and they're still coming toward you, that changes your perception of the event in and of itself and heightens your concern for your safety. And we always used to train in the academies that if somebody's screaming, I give up, as they're punching you, it's safe to say they're not giving up. So is there any circumstance, Mr. Root, that you can foresee or that you can tell me about about, whereby if a subject has his hands up and isn't advancing it, as is one of the two of the witness accounts three of the witness accounts actually so far is there any circumstance that you can see where an officer could still legally discharge a firearm in the manner in which this uh, young man was shot well if we take away variables we change the outcome if we place a, an individual such as mr. Brown um, in front of the officer and he's not advancing he's got his hands up he's saying I surrender you have verbal and physical cues that tell you there is not an immediate threat doesn't mean that there's not an imminent threat but there's not an immediate threat because he's not making effort to close the gap so those come in now you change those variables now the officer keeps the distance gives verbal commands tells him to get on the ground and now you try to get him into a position that allows you to maintain visual control over him until other officers can arrive and they can properly secure him I think what you're telling me is is not an easy answer um, Dennis Root thanks very much for being on the show today appreciate your insight thank you you know it seems